We are now at the set snapping options box in our flowchart. The snapping options dialog box is where we set our digitizing environment. Snapping options exist so we do not get maps like this one here. The snapping options tell QGIS how to go about joining something that you're digitizing with something that already exists in the map. We don't want gaps between adjoining polygons. We don't want slithers or overlapping polygons either. Gaps, slivers and other digitizing errors mean that geographical queries on our completed map are likely to be unreliable. We want our maps so that polygons join each other exactly. Many digitizing problems can be avoided if the snapping options are set up correctly and that is what we are going to do now. You should have the following two maps open. The Land Use Interpretation Shapefile and the Yarmouth Land Use Interpretation Rectified TIFF file. First, we need to make the Land Use Interpretation map active in the Layers area. Then, from the drop-down list in the Project menu, choose Snapping Options and the Snapping Options dialog will appear. Now, let's follow the numbered items in the ebook. Item 1. Click the horseshoe to enable the Snapping Options dialog. Item 2. Choose the Advanced Configuration from the drop-down menu and the Land Use Interpretation map appears in the dialog. Air photos and scans will not show in this dialog because they are not vector files. Item 3. Toggle the checkbox. We are now telling QGIS that the snapping options are enabled for the Land Use Interpretation map. The map you check is the map that you are going to snap to. So you can edit one map and snap to a different map. And that's a bit of an advanced technique. Item 4. The type option allows us to snap, i.e. join, to a vertex, to a segment, or to both. Choose vertex and segment. A vertex is a click point where a line you are digitizing changes direction. A vertex is also called a node. A segment is the line between two nodes. So, if we were to digitize around a watercourse, for example, we would be going click, 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 click to follow the shape of that watercourse. Each mouse click creates a vertex. The lines between each of those mouse clicks are called segments. We are going to be snapping to both the vertex, i.e. the mouse click, and the segment, and that's the line between the two mouse clicks. Item 5 and item 6 refer to both the tolerance and the units of tolerance. This is saying that if you digitize a vertex, it will automatically move so that it snaps to any vertex or segment that is 12 or less pixels away. That way, the edges of any polygon you digitize will overlap the edges of the adjoining polygon exactly. If we were to choose map units instead of pixels, we would be telling QGIS to snap to any vertex or segment that is 12 or less meters away because the map units for Massachusetts Mainland Coordinate System are meters. Item 7. The Avoid Overlap option allows you to avoid overlapping polygons. If you check this box, when you digitize a node that's within the 12 pixel tolerance, adjoining polygons will automatically join each other exactly. Item 8. And finally, we need to enable topological editing. This is especially important for ensuring common boundaries when you're digitizing polygons. Now before we finish, I want to talk about something very tricky that can happen in this snapping options dialog box. 
you can enable and disable these options for various layers so that the polygon you digitize in the land use interpretation map would snap to a polygon in a different map. That would, for example, allow you to make the land use interpretation map to be compatible with the cadastral map. If you feel confident enough, you should experiment with the options in this dialogue. Enabling the snapping on intersection button would allow this advanced technique to happen. Now, if later on, when you're digitizing, you keep on getting unexplainable digitizing errors, then more than likely you have not set your snapping options to be identical to the example in the ebook. So all we need to do now is click the X button in the top right hand corner and dismiss the dialogue. And we're done. I will see you in the next video.